Good morning fellow farmers and fellow entrepreneurs. Welcome again to another tutorial session. So for today we're going to talk about practical vermiculture. I do hope that you have benefited from our previous video. Uh, we talk about sales and marketing. If you haven't watched that video, I put the link below. Before we start, if you are new to this channel and you haven't uh, subscribed yet, uh, consider subscribing and hit that notification bell as well so that you will be notified every time we have a new video. So we continue. Our topic for today is about practical vermiculture. In fact, vermiculture or the worms are our, our friends, our best friends in the farm. So. Let's begin by uh, defining what is uh, worm composting. So we rely on hungry worms to break down farm waste into a very nutrient-rich fertilizer for plants. It's very rich in uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So castings are often called black gold. Okay, it looks like dark, rich coffee grounds. In fact, it contains auxin. It is a naturally occurring growth hormone that is present in the worm castings. So, vermi castings contain more nutrients than conventional compost. So, that's why uh, it's very rich in terms of nutrients. So, it is sanitary and odorless if we do it properly. Okay, so I'm going to give you some guidelines, some tips later on how to do it properly. So at uh, Freddy's farm, we use African night crawler. So a kg or a kilo of these worms can consume a kilo of farm waste every day. So they reproduce quickly under favorable conditions. In fact, they double their population every month. Uh, in the Philippines, uh, Burmi composting has started in the 1970s. So. African night crawler, or referred to as the composting worm, have no scales and they are soft-bodied. They breathe through their skin with a mouth at the tip of their anterior portion. So they feed on moist organic materials that have been decomposed by bacteria and other microorganisms. So, meaning they, they feed on uh, organic matter that has been, you know, pre-decomposed. Right. So most earthworms are hermaphrodites, means to say they have two sex organs. In fact, when they mate, both of them will become pregnant. So the African night crawler is capable of breeding weekly and produce up to three fertilized eggs per capsule. So worms eat as much as their body weight per day, as I previously mentioned already. So they can mature within a month, attain a length of more than 20 centimeters. So that's more or less about 8, eight inches and can live up to more than a year. So these are some of the fascinating facts about our composting worms. They double their population every month. They are hermaphrodites, means to say they have two... Uh, sex organs they are you know when they make the, both of them will become pregnant they have voracious appetite they can consume as much as their body weight per day and they breathe through their skin in fact they shy away from light they don't like uh, you know to be under the sun they have five hearts so even though you cut them into half they still uh, survive why it's because they have five hearts the only uh, downside of that is they can no longer reproduce. They have very complex digestive system, just like a chicken gizzard. So very efficient farm workers. In fact, they work 24-7 without any pay. So all you need to do is to give them food and they're okay with it. So these are some of the considerations when you are choosing a site where we're in we can... Uh, keep uh, African night chlorus. It must be shaded because as, as I mentioned, uh, earthworms shy away from strong light. It should be flood free. So too much water, they will leave the place. 
If it's too dry also, they will also leave the place. Accessible to water supply and source of compost material. Why? Because we have to maintain also some uh, uh, level of moisture. Because they don't like too much, uh, you know, when the, when the place is very dry. They don't like that as well. So, uh, it must be well ventilated. Okay, so they have rooms to, to breathe. So, these are some of the different types of housing or warm bins that we can use in order to keep our worms. So, we can use concrete beds like this and uh, we can keep them there. We can also use uh, layered crates. Okay, so this is very uh, okay, very uh, effective as well, very convenient to manage. Or if you have used drums, uh, you can make an opening and then uh, uh, we can keep worms using this uh, 210 liter drums. Be sure to put some holes below for drainage. Or we can use uh, cemented plots under trees, under the trees, and then cover them with plastics, with leaves to protect them from uh, predators and also sunlight and others. We can also use uh, pig pens that we are no longer using. So this could be a, a an alternative use of uh, pig pens that are no longer in use. Or we can use uh, iron bars and laminated sacks to cover them from sunlight and from, uh, and from the elements and from predators. And of course, if we don't have uh, enough budget, we can use whatever is available in the farm. One of those is, of course, uh, banana trunks. So this could be a very practical uh, vermi bean. Or we can use also coconut husks. So we can lay, we can arrange them, we can pile them in such a way that they're able to hold uh, substrates. In fact, it's possible to plant lettuce on top of vermi bean. Remember, lettuce can be mature, can be harvested within a month. So in, in this manner, by the way, the worms will not affect, uh, they will not even eat your lettuce. Remember, our worms eat only uh, decomposed organic matter. So this could be an, an alternative uh, warm vermi bean. There's a new concept we, which of course I would like to uh, propose. We, we call it vermicery. We combine uh, vermiculture and your nursery. So below is your vermiculture and then on top will be your nursery. Another new concept is what we call as vermi beet here at Freddy's farm. Uh, in Nairobi, we use vermibit. So we have vermiculture below and then rabbit on top. So unlike other animal manure, the rabbit droppings is called cold manure. Okay, it doesn't generate so much heat. So this could be a suggested uh, design of a vermibin. So bin wherein we use plastic lining, but be sure to uh, make some drainage holes. Okay, it's, it will serve as drainage during heavy rains. It is pl placed five centimeter above the bin floor and ten centimeters between each each other to assure a wet area during dry season as well. So this is the the ground level, and we have this, this is the bin floor. And then you can use now hollow blocks to be the boundaries. So and then we have, we have our drained holes about five centimeters or two inches above the the ground or the level, the floor level. And of course, when we are filing our substrates, we need to do it in a sandwich sandwich form. So we can start with a cow dung there and then a green, man green substrates, grass there and then cow manure again and then we can use banana trunks and then cow manure again. That could be one way of uh, filing our substrates. So you sandwich them stuck with a 2 inches layer alternating substrate and after that we water every layer with emas 
or we are we use our EM activated solution. Our I'll put the link below by the way. Uh, dilution rate is 10 ml EMAS for every one liter of water. And of course, we need to protect our worms from predators. So cover the bin with leaves, sacks, or even nets. So consider the sources of materials as we select our raw materials. So we can use market waste, farm waste, or even kitchen waste. Livestock manure or leguminous plants or legumes. Identify materials that are rich in nitrogen. Uh, I will put the link below for the top uh, 8 forage crops that are very rich in nitrogen. But some of them will be uh, duckweed, azola, we can use uh, tricantera and others. So, so the only thing is avoid animal manure. Uh, especially coming from dogs, cats, and other carnivores. Uh, so identify materials rich in carbon also, like grass, rice straw, corn stalks, wood chips, sodas, coco dust, or even paper, especially shredded papers. Do you have, say, uh, that uh, egg trays, the paper one? You can use that as well. Your worms will love those uh, paper egg trays. Huh? Size and kind of materials, it is preferable that we're going to cut them into small pieces, shredded if possible, and then uh, because they decompose more easily. So easily composted materials like banana leaves, banana stalks, uh, banana trunks, and fruit peelings would be uh, uh, essential and important and preferable uh, in your worm bin. Materials readily available in the forms of decomposed chicken ch kitchen waste, EM uh, kitchen waste garbage, uh, I'll put the link also of our composting bin, cow and carabao manure or goats, okay, rabbit manure, uh, chicken manure but pre-decomposed. By the way, these manures must be pre-decomposed, eh? dry, uh, paper shredded and, uh, and other biodegradable materials. So this is by volume ratio. So 50% animal manure and 50% farm waste could be, uh, can, could be used. And then 50% nitrogen rich material and other 50% uh, grasses or farm waste could be another ratio. So these are, this is an example. So if we have manure there, and then you have shredded grass, and then legumes, and of course, banana trunk. If you really wanted to increase the, the number of your earthworms, we suggest uh, to use banana trunks. They love it so much because it's, it's watery. So we can have anaerobic and aerobic composition, uh, decomposition. So after preparing the substrate in a sandwich type stack filing, spray or drench uh, EMAS at a rate of, you know, uh, 10 ml for every 1 liter of water, one, 1 is to 100. Cover the bin with laminated sacks or use tarpaulin. So it will generate a lot of heat. And leave for 2 weeks to decompose. Let the EM bacteria uh, do the composting uh, activity. Okay. So after 15 days, remove the plastic covering, deploy the worms, and then the earthworms will just start to feed on the substrate. Maintain an optimum moisture. Not too dry, not too wet. At least 50 to 60% moisture. And then cover with nets or leaves to protect them from predators. So test the moisture content. Squeeze a fistful of substrate. Five to seven drops of water indicates about 80% moisture content. So as I mentioned, you maintain uh, 50 to 60% moisture content. Protect your worms from natural predators like birds, birds, chicken, frogs, mice, snakes, flatworms, and even pigs because the pigs love to eat worms as well. A source of their protein. 
Ants do not necessarily eat worms but they can kill all your population if left unattended. So what we can do with ants is uh, you can wipe, uh, we can uh, apply, maybe use cooking oil or use uh, uh, car oil on the sides of your, of your bin so that now your ants cannot uh, cross over. Unwanted materials in your composting bin. Meat scraps. This can attract unwanted animal visitors and create unpleasant odors as well. So rotten meat may produce bacteria that can pose health hazard. So avoid meat scraps, including fats, oils, and grease. Because large amount of this will give your microbes indigestion, uh, slowing down composting process. It also attracts unwanted pests. Droppings from caged birds. Because uh, these bird droppings may contain dangerous disease pathogens. Uh, droppings from dogs, cats, and other carnivores. In fact, we do not uh, suggest that we use human waste because the potential, because it has the potential for spreading disease. In addition, it is very unsanitary. Including disease plants. So any plants in your farm that are infested with disease, we avoid uh, putting them into our uh, composting bin as well. So how do we harvest? Well, we can harvest manually. Uh, you pick the worms by hand and transfer them to a new worm bed. So the vermicompost may be allowed to dry in the shade for a few days and sifted if finer compost is desired. So that's one. Or you can do pyramid method. In the shade, put the vermicompost in such a manner that it looks like a pyramid. After a day, vermicompost can be harvested at the top part easily since this will drive the worms to settle at the bottom of the pile. When you reach the bottom pile, you can extract the worms manually. Another would be you can expose you know, this pile uh, with a light, with the light, and then uh, because the worms will go deep, then you can harvest uh, the top layer. Or we can use migration method. Remember, worms are only motivated by moisture and food. So if there's no more food uh, here, they will just migrate to uh, the other bin. So move the contents of the whole bed to one side. Fill the empty half with new substrate. Allow the worms to move freely to the new food. But be sure that there are holes in between so that now they can move. So harvest the castings left by the worms because uh, avoid watering here and then avoid putting new substrate so that now they will abandon that bin and then they will go to the next bin. That way, uh, there will be no more worms here. You can harvest freely and easily. Or we can use now uh, vermi castings. They can be collected using a top harvest method. This is our favorite way method of harvesting our vermi cast. So, or you can use now a screen with mesh, 3 16th inches to separate pure vermi cast from substrate. So, uh, vermi post can immediately be used after harvest. A 3 over 16 inch mesh wire is recommended to, separ so to separate pure vermicompost from the remaining substrates. Another method would be the use of rotary type compost screener. So you put the compost here and then you rotate. The vermicast will drop here and then the worms will be collected at the end. But uh, I don't necessarily recommend this because it's going to stress your worms. So, drying and storage. So, we dry the vermicompost by air. Do not expose them to the sun because we're going to lose our the nitrogen content. So, pure vermicas with 30% moisture are placed in sacks under the shaded place to protect the microorganisms. So, the ideal would be 30% moisture. So vermicompost can be stored at 
30% moisture content in a plastic bags stored in cool place away from direct sunlight. So these are the summary of procedures. So step one, prepare the warm bin. Step two, layer first layer, use livestock manure, spread evenly. And then after that, second layer, you can put plants, especially uh, banana trunks. And then step three, uh, third layer, you can put livestock manure again. And then fourth layer, you can put now uh, leaves. And fifth layer, cover with manure again. Be sure to spray emas in every layer because we introduce our microbes to help in the decomposition process. And then cover the warm bin and wait for two weeks. The microbes will do their decomposition job. Now, after 15 days, or you have to test first. So you put your finger, if it is no longer hot, means to say that the decomposition process is over, then we can now deploy the worms. If it's still hot, they can you can extend for another week. And then cover the worm bin to protect from predators. Water two to three times a week because we have to maintain moisture. Important note to remember, we have to uh, realize that in vermiculture, it is always what we feed our worms that what we get, okay? So thank you so much. I hope that you have learned again something today in our tutorial session. Again, if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you will be notified always whenever we have uh, new videos. So thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Tumsifu Yosi Christu, melele na melele. Amina. Mungu awa bariki. Be blessed and keep safe. Bye.